Good morning and God bless you. Yeah, I just want to state the obvious and say that we didn't post anything in the past almost two weeks and that is due to a loss that we had in the family. We lost my father-in-law, the Neil's dad, on the 15th of August and we've just been busy with you know all the arrangements yeah and even though we have been busy with all the arrangements and comforting everybody in the family we haven't come to a complete still stand as well well i haven't um, i try to keep myself a little occupied you know don't let me dwell on the unfortunate too much that's why I keep myself busy. Just to show you, we have finished the second grace bear and fold it. I just want to do an additional layer of pure compost on top of this. And then it will be ready to plant, you know, our September crops. We'll sow in September seed sowing. So yeah, at least that garden bed is re ready. And then in September, I'll start this next one for October. As you can see, the kids also painted the garden beds for me while well, the two that are finished, and I think it looks awesome. Just to show you there, okay, this is the second one, and the kids painted that, and then the first one, kids also painted that one for me, although they didn't, they didn't paint the side, but they did uh, paint the frame and the front. And I'm also happy to say that we've got our seeds sprouting and everything goes swimmingly in that garden bed and in the little greenhouse. But I'll soon do an update on that as well. What we are going to do today is to continue on our backyard chicken coop. I've just put some floor, you know, the floorboards in and uh, some braces to basically steady it. And yeah, I'll continue a little bit on this project today. As you know, I'm building, you know, this whole coop out of a repurposed or used coop and repurposed that to build the chicken coop. And although the backyard looks a mess at the moment, I just also want to show you, I've got pieces of wood in different sizes that's all on little pallets there as well and that is the wood that i'm repurposing Just something I want to show you here, instead of me putting one board on top of each other, I'm going to let it overlap like that. The reason for that is, should we receive a lot of rain, it might start leaking through these seams into the cage. But if I put it like this, and we receive rain, the rain will run down from the one ball to the next and just basically drip off instead of seeping through the sea.
Good morning again. This is the following morning. Yesterday I only worked like half a day because I had to take my mother-in-law to the funeral parlor and to town to conduct some business and get all the arrangements done for the funeral. So this morning I'm just going to continue on our Crooked Coop project. I just want to quickly show you what we did off camera. I didn't realize that the battery went flat and continued working. Yeah, but I can just quickly catch you up on the progress. What I did here is to... I bought a frame and just put some slate in it that will function as the back door when I clean out the coop and then the entrance in the front is where the chickens will, will, will go in and out but this will help me to you know always keep it nice and clean tomorrow I will put a lock on the door as well yeah and then I think I'll get more into all the rules <coughs> rules and regulations of our local municipality and all the bylaws that we need to get into in order to ensure that our crooked coop over here adheres to all the regulations. Basically I will, you know, the gaps that might be here and there, I will fill in, you know, with expanding foam or some cork that I will just, you know, fill and seal it basically. And then the inside I will paint with a rubber sealant because our uh, municipality, the bylaw says that it needs, you know, the, the chicken house needs to be made of an impervious material um, so, you know, the manure can't seep through. So that is something that I will do. And also what I still need to do is the vents over here. Basically what I'm going to do is either chicken wire or mesh that I will place here and this will function then as 
you know, the ventilation for the chicken coop, and then I need to finish the weeds. But yeah, that is the progress so far. That's like this over here, and that is what I will fill in either with expanding foam or some caulking, and maybe even fix the cracks over there before I paint it. To be honest, I am actually quite happy that I left this little chicken coop project for a while. You know, worked a bit on the garden and, you know, the other race bed instead of finishing this job because with the passing of my father-in-law, this is actually something nice to work on and just to let my, you know, mind go a little bit and get out of, you know, a little bit out of the situation and just focus on on something else and have something else to keep me busy and that is the way that you know I work through through things and that actually you know made me think about certain certain things there are some churches or some teaching in certain congregations that teach that we shouldn't mourn the death of a loved one but we have to rejoice and in a sense that is true but in the same breath Jesus also said blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted so in a sense yes those for us that are in Christ and knows that the passing away of a loved one isn't the end it's then passing over to you know, to the spiritual uh, realm. And we do have that assurance and hope and joy that we will be reunited one day in the future again, either when we ourselves pass or when Jesus returns with those that have fallen in Christ. And then they will receive renewed body, bodies, you know, the imperishable body, and we will be transfigured and receive our imperishable spiritual bodies if you look at ephesians 4. so yes there is the aspect of joy and that we don't have to mourn because we know it's not the end but there's still the loss of a loved one and i personally don't think that anyone should discount the emotions in you know, involved in that. We shouldn't tell the family not to mourn. I can't tell my wife, don't mourn for your father because it is a dad. And I also need to allow myself, you know, to feel the sting of loss. And it is heartbreaking and we will miss him. My mother-in-law, her life partner, her soulmate. I had a discussion with her and she said, you know, for the first time in her life, she feels like half a person. She feels empty. She feels there's a piece of her missing. And it's true because when they came together in marriage, like God said, two shall be one. They will be one flesh. Uh, you know, husband and wife will be one flesh. Therefore, man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife and they will become one flesh. That made her complete. That made him complete. And to have that taken away, obviously you will, you know, one will feel like half of you is gone. You will feel empty. And that in itself is a beautiful thing because it, it shows the truth of God's word. And I think we need to learn to appreciate that emotion that she feels because it's not always a negative thing and yes we do speak hope and we do encourage but the sense of loss is also a valid emotion and it's not necessarily negative and we need to acknowledge that as well and give validity to that emotion as well and be empathic to her as well and to let her know that we are with it. Although there is hope, and although we know the truth that he has eternal life in Christ, and although we know that we will be reunited one day with 
the second coming of Christ or when we ourselves pass and in the spirit realm we will reunite and yes things will be different as to what it is or was in the physical realm here on earth like I said we do have that hope and we have that surety uh, we have that assurance we have the truth the word of God that comforts us but we also have the promise that blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted and to acknowledge that to mourn the loss of a loved one is natural and it is godly as well the bible also says mourn with those who mourn and rejoice with those who rejoice so being in mourning acknowledging the loss of a loved one is perfectly normal natural and godly and we shouldn't avoid that but we also shouldn't despair because we are not without hope. We have the truth and we have the assurance of everlasting life for those that are in Christ. It's a blessing to be able to work on a project like this by Kruka Chicken Coop, made of all these used materials. The only thing new here is the nails <laughs> that I bought but it gave me the opportunity to, to deal with loss as well in my way being somewhere alone and working things out in my mind speaking to God working through my emotions in my way and then receiving comfort from God through his word and that's the way I deal with it other people might need that you just be there for it. Like Job's friends. In the beginning of Job's story in the Bible, his friends had just came and sat with him. They didn't encourage him. They didn't speak to him. They didn't try to give advice and find answers in the beginning. They did the right thing. They were there for you and they just moaned with him until they didn't until they tried to give advice and to find answers say to God say to Job that he should repent for whatever sin he committed and it wasn't that he sinned he was a righteous man so then we start fixing things that aren't there and that's what us as human beings always try to do we try to fix everything but sometimes all people need is for us to be there for them to mourn with them and when they find the opportunity and the courage to rejoice again to rejoice with it other people might be very supportive as well to an extent until they feel their own emotional tank running out and they need to be by themselves just to recharge again and we need them to allow them to do that as well and both my wife and my brother-in-law are perfect examples of that they will be with their mom and encourage her and you know just be there and support her until they need you know, just that bit of space you know to catch a breath of fresh air you know just to be alone for one evening my brother-in-law stayed with his mom for the whole time now but every now and then he'll come back home to his flat just sleep over just to, to be alone and work through things for himself and then you know that evening the meal would be sleeping over by her mom but the point I'm trying to make is we all deal with emotional things in our own way. And there's no right way, but there is different ways. And my way might be completely different to the next person, but it's the right way for me. I'm one of those persons that always tended to say that I don't mourn the loss of a person or rather celebrate his life because it gave me a more positive outlook you know to death 
to the loss of a loved one. And yes, in a sense, it is true. Because I will always remember my father-in-law for the love and the advice and the knowledge and the wisdom that he shared with me and that is what I want to remember. But I also know that I tend to avoid emotional situations and my wife or my mother-in-law or my daughter and son who might be more emotional inclined people it would be wrong of me to tell them but don't mourn in that way you know rather celebrate his life because then i try to nullify how they deal with the memories of their father and that is what actually started making me think and basically look into scripture again about what the bible truly says about the loss of loved ones but i am grateful that god created us all differently that he wired us all differently because when one is weak the other is strong and so we can support each other and help each other through through times like these also coming back to celebrating one's life a loved one that passed on to celebrate his or her life is also a beautiful thing and thinking about that i started thinking about all the blessings and wonderful gifts that god give us in this life and he gives it freely and unconditionally whether it's our talents uh, financial blessings our health um, our abilities you know everything is there for you to manage I mean you can you can control and manage your health you can choose whether to exercise or not to eat healthy or not and how you manage that so that is in your control and how you manage that is also in your control if you take a talent like being musical not everybody i'm certainly i love music but i'm certainly not musically talented but some people just have that natural gift that talent that god-given ability to pick up an instrument and they are so inclined and can start basically playing it from the first time they see or hear the instrument. And then there are people who are so disciplined that they will sit and they will develop that skill because the passion for it is there to drive them to learn that skill. And through discipline, they acquire that skill to play a certain musical instrument. So that is also in your control and it's also yours to manage finances whatever your relationships i believe one of the biggest blessings god could ever give us is our relationships with those around us and how we nurture those relationships is in our control and we can manage it and if you make a mistake you can always go back and try and fix it there's one gift from god and we try and manage that as best we can but it's never ever been in our control and nobody can control that because it's not ours it still belongs to god that gift is on loan to us but it still belongs to god and that gift is our time on this earth there's not a single moment that i can control i can try and manage my time as best I can. But if I make a mistake in the moment, I cannot control it. I cannot go back and change it. Not like a relationship, not like playing an instrument incorrectly or learning. Time is never in your control. It just keeps moving. And I want to encourage you today that with the time that we've been gifted here on earth, by God, that we 
will always remember in every single moment to love our loved ones because we only have them for a certain amount of time. And the time we have with them has never ever been in our control, nor in theirs. It's only in God's hands. And we never know the moment when a person's time has run out here on earth and when it's time for them to move on. So I want to encourage you to think about time. A 20-year-old can be taken in the next moment. A 50-year-old could live for another 40 years, 50 years. We never know how close or how far we are away from our time coming to an end. And that is why we need to respect and love our loved ones every single moment that we are on this earth. I need to clean up. It's getting dark. I love you. And God bless you. Goodbye.